Oh my gosh, the Disney executives in charge of content oh, have decided that they are going to up the ante on gen, uh, gender politics. They had an all-hands meeting promising that at least half the characters now in its productions will be LGBTQIA2+, or from racial minorities by the end of the year. Thank you, Disney. Somebody's finally done it. Woo! They have finally done it. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, this is great. They're also going to overturn. They're going to work. Their company's mission is to overturn this law in Florida. Now, Ron DeSantis had something to say about it. Here's Ron DeSantis' response yesterday. For Disney to come out and put a statement and say that the bill should have never passed and that they are going to actively work to repeal it, I think, one, was fundamentally dishonest, but two, I think that crossed the line. This state is governed by the interests of the people Thank of God. the state of Florida. It is not based on the demands of California corporate executives. They do not run this state. They do not control this state. I also thought it was interesting. I talked to the Speaker of the House yesterday afternoon, and he said Disney never called him while they were putting this through the House. They didn't seem to have a problem with it when it was going through. If this was such an affront, why weren't they speaking up at the outset? And yet they won't. Oh if we would have put in the bill done. that you were not allowed to have curriculum that discussed the oppression of the Uyghurs in China, Disney would have endorsed that in a second. It is. <laughs> he is so good. That is good. He man. is so good. You notice what he just did? They didn't call during while it was in the house. He just threw just threw a log on the internal fire. Oh yeah, every Disney employee oh, knows they gosh. didn't move they a muscle, muscle because they didn't. Act, you know, they don't actually care about no, any of this crap. No. Okay, so so here's the thing. Oh, the, the I think the the people who are in charge of the craziness they do care. Yeah. Those oh, employees, that that, yeah, yeah those they employees absolutely do. care. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it is it it's now the absolute woke that are running Disney. I want to play the. Uh, the Disney executive in charge uh, of general entertainment. This is what she said in a company-wide Zoom call that Disney, they have to do certain things. Here she is. I'm here as a mother of, of two queer children, actually. Um, uh, one transgender child um, um, and one pansexual child. Um, pansexual. And, and also as a leader. Um, and that was the thing that really got me. We had an open forum last week at 20th where, um, again, the home of, of really incredible groundbreaking LGBTQIA stories over the years where um, one of our execs stood up and said, you know, we only have a handful of queer leads in our content. And I went, what? I, that can't be true. And I, and I, and I realized, oh, it, it actually is true. We have many, many, many LGBTQIA characters in our stories, and mm -hmm. and and yet we don't have enough leads. Yes, um, and narratives in which gay characters just just get to be characters, right? Um, and and not have to be about gay stories. Mm -hmm. And so um, mm -hmm. that's been very eye opening for me. And I mm. hope this is a moment where shoot um the 50 percent of the tears <laughs> sorry are coming um uh we don't we just don't allow each other to go backwards okay mm -hmm. so she's not going to allow anybody to go backwards and she means this she's crying about it so she means this uh deeply and how she must how she must have just felt now that no one you know if it's not for them if it's not for these cartoons Who's going to accept her pansexual child? Who's going to do that? I'd like the ages of her kids. I'd like to know uh, how old they were when they decided to change gender. Or Anyway, um, now, cut to queer stories in Disney. I'm on the production side. Uh, part of uh, the work that I feel like I can put in is um, 
making sure that we take place in modern day New York. So making sure that that's like an accurate reflection of New York. So I put together like a tracker of our background characters to make sure that we have like a, the full breadth of expression. And uh, we got into a very similar conversation, Carrie, of like, oh, all of our like gender non-conforming characters are in the background. Mm. And so it's not just a numbers game um, of how many LGBTQ plus characters you have. We mm -hmm. got mm -hmm. the further, uh, the, the more centered a story is on a character, the more nuanced you get to get into their story. And especially with like trans characters, you can't see if someone is trans. There's not one way to look trans. And so kind of the only way to have these like canonical trans characters, canonical asexual characters, canonical bisexual characters is to give them stories where they can like be their whole selves. Huh. Um, now uh, here's a, a Disney executive producer on the not at all secret gay agenda. It's like, I love Disney's content. I grew up watching, you know, all of the classics. Sure. They have been a huge, like, informative <laughs> part of my life. But at the same time, like, I worked at small studios most of my career. And I'd heard, you know, you hear whispers. Like, I'd, I'd heard things like, oh, you know, they won't let you show this at a Disney show. And I'm like, okay. So I was a little, like, sus when I started. And, but then my experience was bafflingly the opposite of what I had heard on my little pocket of like, you know, proud family, Disney TVA. Um, the showrunners were super welcoming Meredith Roberts and like the, the our leadership over there has been so welcoming to like mm -hmm. my, like not at all secret gay agenda. And so like, I, I feel like I felt like it was, I mean, like maybe it was that way in the past, but I guess like something must have happened in the last like, like they are turning it around, they're going hard. And then all that like momentum that I felt like that sense of, I don't have to be afraid to like, let's have these two characters kiss. Let's in the background, this are, like I was just wherever I could just basically adding queerness to like, the, if you see anything queer in the show, I'm proud of them. But like, I, I just was like, no one would stop me and no one was trying to stop me. There you go. So that's what Disney is now i happen to have the disneyland prospectus this is what walt went to uh all of the banks to try to get them to do disneyland and he clearly spells out what disney is all about and what disneyland is all about now let me ask you with this agenda does this match walt disney world and why walt disney's and Walt Disney World has been the brand and the name that you could trust. Walt Disney, sometime in 1955, will present for the people of the world, to children of all ages, a new experience in entertainment. In these pages is proffered a glimpse into this great adventure, a preview of what the visitor will find in Disneyland. The Disneyland Story. The idea of Disneyland is a simple one. It'll be a place for people to find happiness and knowledge. Oh. It'll be a place for parents and children to share pleasant times in one another's company. A place for teachers and pupils to discover greater ways of understanding and education. Oh, it sounds like this fits right in, doesn't it? Here the older generation can recapture the nostalgia of days gone by and the younger generation can savor the challenge of the future. Here will be the wonders of nature and man for all to see and understand. Okay, well, what's the problem? You could interpret that. I'm sure Walt meant let's have transgender people all over. We need a Disney. Hey, right over here. I'm your Disney princess. I'm sure that's what he meant. Until you get to this part, Disneyland will be, be based upon and dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America. It will be uniquely equipped to dramatize these dreams and these facts and send them forth as a source of courage and inspiration to all the world. Disneyland will be something of a fair, an exhibition, 
a playground, a community center, a museum of living facts, and a showplace of beauty and magic. It will be filled with the accomplishments, the joys and hopes of the world we live in, and it will remind us and show us how to make these wonders a part of our own lives. The problem with this is Disney and Disneyland was based on the facts and the ideals that created America. Disney has gone so far off the rails. I am canceling my Disney uh, subscription. I will not go to their parks. And this kills me as a guy who has always loved Disney. I will continue to buy up the artifacts and the and the um, uh, real, true history of Disney to preserve it so pu- someday people can remember what Disney was. But this is no longer Walt Disney's company. It is truly in name only. And I have to tell you, I have been waiting for a while uh, to start a fundraiser, and I wasn't going to ask you for your help, but it, it, I, I can't wait any longer. I can't tell you what I'm working on, but I need the seed money. I need a million dollars in seed money, and I just want you to go. It's something for Mercury One that will hang on just a second. This has been its inspiration the whole time. It will, if I may quote Walt, it will be based upon and dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and hard facts that have created. It will be uniquely equipped to dramatize these dreams and facts and send them forth as a source of courage and inspiration to all the world. You want to help me on something? I'm just going to call it in honor of Walt Project Florida. I want you to go to, uh, I wasn't planning on doing this today. I want you to go to mercuryone.org. And either donate to the general fund, or if you can, I don't even know on the website if you can do this, uh, just market the Florida Project. Will you? I need to raise a million dollars for something that we can turn around in pretty quick time that will truly be something. I've been talking about it internally for about three years will truly get your children to experience history, real history, in a way that they will leave saying, when can we go back? When can we go back there? I, I've been thinking about this for over 10 years. The technology was available about five years ago. It was about a billion dollars I can now do it for a million, and I would love for your help. This will be for the uh, Mercury One Museum, uh, and I plan on taking it on the road. If you would uh, like to donate, it will be tax deductible. You do it at mercuryone.org. That's mercuryone.org. Disney, we've had enough. We've had enough. Good luck with your future. Good luck.